Having read a lot of mixed reviews about the kit, most being positive, and after much deliberation, I started off with the Copro 72nd scale MiG-21. I wasn't sure what I was getting myself into, but by the end of it, I built not one, but two kits. Hey everyone, my name is Shabir. let's get on with the build. So I began by painting the seat in olive drab and the cockpit interior with Soviet emerald green. The details on the seat were non-existent, so I built the seat cushions with modeling clay and the seat harnesses with masking tape to add some visual appeal to the model. Here you can see me detail painting the cushions and building the seat belts with masking tape. I then assembled the cockpit tub and the ejection seat rails and the control column. The pilot was brush painted in olive drab and his helmet was painted grey. I recently purchased a set of Sharpies as an experiment and began detailing the instrument panel with various colors like black, white, red and blue as per a reference photo of the MiG-21 cockpit. This was a fun process and it helped enhance the instrument panel a lot. I also used a toothpick to paint minute details in the instrument panel. The cockpit interiors had no details so to add a bit of visual appeal I detailed the cockpit interiors also with sharpies and toothpick painting. Finally the fuselage halves were joined and this is where the issues started creeping in. You can see the huge gap in the nose section ahead of the cockpit. Well this would need a lot of filling. I wanted to depict the MiG in the flying configuration, so I began closing up the gear bay doors. You can clearly see some more gaps here.
The wings and horizontal stabilizers were then attached to the fuselage. There were more gaps here all along the upper and lower wing roots and thus began the saga of filling with Comfil automotive filler and progressive sanding with various grits of sandpaper. After that the various smaller bits and bobs like the antennae and air scoops were fitted to the fuselage and the general assembly of the MiG-21 was complete. But as soon as I dropped the canopy over the fuselage to check the dry fit, the glaring fit error in the kit came right at me. The cockpit framing for the canopy was not only deeper by about 3 to 4 millimeters, but also skewed between the left and right sides by about 1 millimeter. I thus had to painstakingly reconstruct the entire canopy framing around the cockpit, and this alone took me almost 11 days to finish with two hours of work each day to finally align the canopy and fuselage together. I thought maybe it's an issue with just this one kit and the second kit would be better, but I came across the exact same issues in the exact same spots with the second kit as well. Well, it seems as if the Copro engineers went on vacation before constructing the canopy framing and forgot about it after the vacation was over. Anyway, as you can see, the canopy framing finally began to look the part after all that stalled 11 day effort. Just as a joke, I'd named this version of MiG-21 MF to PF conversion, the acronym PF denoting practice filler. I definitely recommend this kit to anyone who just wants to test his or her patience by practicing filling and sanding for days on end. Finally, after priming with grey primer, I began the marbling coat of white for the faded paint look. A technique I owe credit to the experts like Mike McDougall and Will Patterson. Though the technique would work much better with a black primer underneath, it worked pretty nicely with a grey primer as well. But that's because this is a single color scheme aircraft. I then pre-shaded the entire aircraft with black. Again, as I said, I feel a black primer would have worked better and faster to achieve this look. Finally, I began spraying very light misty coats of the IAF greenish grey and Polish Air Force bluish grey on the two models respectively, ensuring that the pre shading shows through and also the white squiggles of the marble coat also show their magic of faded paint. Finally, after all the paint had been drying for roughly two days, I gloss coated the model with Della Rowney gloss varnish and then moved on to the decaling phase. I used my standard procedure of applying decals and I used the Bright Spark Indian Air Force decals for the Indian Air Force MiG-21 and the Copro kit decals for the Polish Air Force MiG-21. 
After applying a very subtle wash and cleaning up, the masking was removed and the models were ready. And here are the completed models of the MiG-21. In the foreground you can see the MiG-21 from 9 PLM Polish Air Force and in the background you have the MiG-21 from 101 Squadron Hawkeyes Indian Air Force. You can see that the experiments of paint fading have worked and the canopy has also aligned pretty nicely with the fuselage. Though there is much more to be desired in this model, however, I decided to put an end to it here. A big thanks to master modelers from India like Vinayak and Doc who guided me with the final realistic finish that was achieved on the Indian Air Force MiG-21. So that's it ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed building the models. If you like my video, click the thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for watching, I'll see you again soon.